Hello and welcome to round three frontline action of the 2024 Hub City Amateur Championship, sponsored by the Great Courses of South Carolina and the Hub City Disc Golf Club. Catch cam today we have Michael Bowman. Drone footage courtesy of Jonathan Winrow. The commentary team is Vern Wyatt and Owen Camp. On the card today we have Lance Harden from Easley, South Carolina. Jonathan Smith from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Bill Pauley from Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. And Hunter Bowman from Duncan, South Carolina. Hole one is a par four, 504 foot shot. First you have to weave your way through the trees and over this hump and hopefully find a good spot to land up here. The second big task is making your way all the way up the hill here and hopefully having a putt at this red basket. All right, we got final round coverage here of the Hub City Amp Championship. Lance Harden is gonna push here and see what he can do to maybe take this thing home, but he's got three strong contenders right on his heels. Yeah, three strong contenders that really made a push last round out at Woodruff to, to get them to this spot and put themselves in contention with Lance here. And what a course to do this at. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm so excited to see these guys playing these blue tees out at Pipeline. Um, such a such a tough layout. Yeah. Ooh, it's a We're gonna see tight lines throughout this course. Lots of elevation changes, and these blue tees, you'll, you're gonna find some distance along with all of that. So. Mm -hmm. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't a typically somewhere around even par is a thousand rated? Yeah, typically even par to one under is a thousand rated on this layout. So not for the faint of heart. Not at all. A lot of these guys might consider walking off of this course over par still a good round. So. Mm -hmm. We're kind of seeing already early in this round, you know, that, that red basket still probably 400 feet from where Jonathan is here. Oh, I'm making the catch game guy turn around. What a monster shot. That was really nice. Made up a lot of ground there. Bill's just way up on this hill over to the right. He, he might be trying to climb along the hill and try to st stay up on top of it to get towards that red basket. Yeah, that's going to be trouble. He found something. Mm-hmm. This that's, is a tree. That's a nice decision there from Hunter. He's just going to play this to the to the bottom of that hill. He's going to play his next shot up it. Bill's still kind of looking. He's kind of making his own fairway here. Chopping away at it, little bit by little bit. This is Lance's second shot. Wow. Oh. Uh. Unfortunately, he caught one of those trees, It's but fortunate that he stayed up on top of that hill. Right. You know, it, it is not out of normal to see these shots go up, lose sa lose track of them, and then about five seconds later, see it rolling back by you along mm -hmm. the hill. It's a good up. It's still a difficult putting green once you get up here. It's not a not a gimme once you make it to the top of the hill. Yeah, it's not exactly flat up here. Well, and still get that roll away chance. I mean, it slopes all the way to the bottom, which is 120 feet behind you. Mm -hmm. It's a really important that these discs get in the basket. Great what a party from Lance. Mm -hmm. Way to start his round. I mean... Coming out here to Pipeline Blues, putting it down on the first hole. Good putt. Yeah, good par. You're really happy with the par walking off the first hole. You're gonna be you're gonna be happy with par. You know, we were just talking about how over par is potentially still a, a good round out here. Mm -hmm. um, par on it on any hole feels great. Really a good start for for three on the card. Bill's gonna take uh, Pokey there.
Level 2, par 3, 390 feet. You're looking for a long flip up right hand, backhand. Some of these guys might try a forehand flex to get all the way up here. Gonna be tough though. 390, this plays maybe a little further because of the shot shape that you have to throw. A good looking shot from Lance. It's gonna be somewhere on that hill along the left side. Jonathan normally dices his hole up into two shots. He's going to throw something kind of out that way, not trying to get all the way up there. He le leaked it a little left side, though, and he's going to have to contend with some trees to get through. I think Hunter's getting ready to throw a firebird. He's, he's thrown this disc a few times this weekend. A little too overstable of a disc, maybe. That's going to hit early left. I don't know if it, that's an older Firebird. He's expecting to flip up a little bit. or mm. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't let Billy Polly fool you. He could be playing MA40, MA... You know, he's, he's a Masters player, but man, he can... He can rifle a shot out there, both forehand and backhand. Jonathan's up shot just caught a couple of, of cabbages going up that way. You can see, not only is his green sloped, but it's got roots running all through it as well. So you've got to contend with those, trying to land that disc as flat as possible along the slope and as soft as you can as well. Just like Bill did there. Yep, the disc he threw was a, I think it was a golem, I think that's what it was. There's a lot of discs like that on the market now, like the koi, the golem, something that's yeah, really that, rubbery. That type of disc can be really helpful out here on this course. It's a good bid. Jonathan gave a good bid at his par putt. Just a little bit of a misfire off the putt from Hunter. He's going to have a, a comebacker almost just as l as long. Mm -hmm. Wow. Drains it, though. That's a good correction. Yep. Jonathan's going to tap in his bogey as well. Lance is going to drop in his par. and Billy's going to take his, his nice quiet par there. His drive got far enough up. He had the easy up shot. Mm -hmm. As well as Lance. Yeah, Hunter and Jonathan were trapped on the side of that hill. and Makes it tough. Hole three. Par three, 305 feet. First thing you got to do is get out of this gap. Miss those trees, especially the big one in the middle. Then from there, it's pretty clear sailing, but you do have a protected green with some pesky little trees in the way. This slight uphill right in front of the tee pad mm -hmm. can really lull you into into throwing into it or throwing it. You can overcorrect and throw it straight up in the air. Makes it hard to get to the to the basket. It's a nice height there from Lance. That's a great shot. Yeah. Anywhere into that line of trees, right? You cross the the line of trees anywhere into the woods up there, far enough up. You're going to get a good putt. Mm -hmm. Great pull. He made the gap. Yeah, it's a little short, but, you know, he's happy he just hit the gap and kept moving. Oh, Jonathan squaring that tree right in the middle. I feel like he was trying to go out to the left of it and then big comeback with the forehand yeah that's that's the shot he plays here you know left of that tree tries to swing it back oh and hunter that's that's a misfire for sure he's got an opportunity to try and save a three still here oh nice pull 
little short, but he's going to give himself the opportunity to save the par. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan, you know, he got a good kick off that tree, still got his forward progress, made it out here to the open. He's got a little bit of this gra long grass to run up in, but still an open shot to try and get up here to the pin. Great backhand oh. shot. Yeah, that's a great recovery. You know, he, he hit that first available, and then he told himself, you know, still just get up and down for my par and move on. see those trees waving in the wind that yeah, wind is really picking up lots of trees out of pipeline but there's enough open spaces where the you know the the wind can really funnel through yeah ah. that wind will do exactly that it'll funnel straight through those rows where the pipeline is is put in that wind mm -hmm. will just shoot down those those areas of open spaces go a uh, great start from Lance I mean he's he's shown these guys he's here to play mm -hmm. he's here to play he's gonna take a lead he's gonna he's gonna try to expand on that and keep putting the pedal down everybody else has got at least one bogey up to this point but Lance is just firing away two down through three yeah just set himself up great going into this round we're just talking about how even par, potentially a thousand rated, close mm -hmm. to it. He's two under through three, and he's setting himself up well. And these are the more scoreable holes on the course. Those first couple of holes are the ones to get. Hole four, going down the pipeline, par three from the blue, 507 feet. It's an intimidating 507, but. It'll be reachable for some of these guys going straight down the hill. They're going to try to hold something as straight as possible and for as long as possible try to give themselves a putt. That's how you do it. It's a long look, but it's still a look. I think the uh, the big takeaway from that throw is Lance was just trying to stay in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, odds are you'll probably see Jonathan try to throw something just staying in the fairway as well, even pulling out of mid-range and just saying, you know what, I'm going to play this for three. Oh, Bill, put that up in the air. That's, you know, I think the worst mistake you can make on this hole is going left. Mm -hmm. Going right, you still end up with uh, a lot of space to try and get back out. You don't go as far into the gap. Jonathan's going to throw a forehand over at this left and watch it come back right. I love that play because it stays away from the, the left side. And that left side's so dangerous, but that forehand finishing right is going to always be down there. It's always going to give him an upshot back up towards the basket. Mm hmm. Hunter looking for some flip out of that disc. That was crazy. I expected that one to just choke off deep into the trees, and suddenly at the last second it turned. Good up by Bill, and tall grass stop him there. Yeah, you know, like I was saying, though, he had no chance to get up to the basket, whereas Jonathan's, you know, shot that ended right over here leaves him almost this wide open up shot, and he executed that great. Mm hmm. It's gonna be Billy's third. Here's Lance's drive trying to make the big birdie. And this is a this is a big stroke swing. If you can get the two on this hole, you can be confident that you're getting a stroke on almost everybody else in the field. Mm-hmm. Did we have any birdies on this hole during the day? Riker West birdied this on on the Sunday. Wow. So he 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 for sure got a stroke on the rest of the field. Um, you know, 22 players out there. We had one birdie, 11 pars. Um, so uh, half the field took a par, and then 10 bogeys, bogey plus. So um, even par, taking taking a stroke on uh, a lot of the a lot of the field, and you'll see a lot of that on these holes. Uh, we were just talking about how tough this course is. Pars are good, 
you walk away with a par on any hole and you can rest assured know that you're, you're getting a stroke on, on a good portion of the field. Mm-hmm. Hole 5, par 399 feet. It's another uh, classic Carolina Woods tunnel shot, but this one's got a little bit of elevation to it. And if you happen to hit something halfway through, then you're going to have an awkward second shot because it's going to be down in the valley and you have to throw straight and up at the basket. As tough as this course is, this is on the bingo card for birdie. I mean, if you're if you're trying to make up for a bogey you had somewhere or, or just trying to, to play the course in front of you, this is the one you want to birdie. with as scarce as your chances are to birdie out on this course. So it's really important to get. Mm -hmm. You want to get the easy one that's out here. Keep you around where it's at. It's going to be a Cobra from Jonathan. He's going to throw this Cobra. He's going to come over on it a little bit. Wonderfully that's thrown. perfect, yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan of anything that you can just throw super straight. For me, it's just a, a buzz. Just try to put that on a rope and just do exactly what Jonathan just did. It's a good shot from Hunter. It'll leave him a yeah. lot. A uh, little early release there, but it turned out okay. He's got to look at the basket. Yeah, that left side can be pretty forgiving for you if you if you're missing that that main tree that's over there. Lance has got a long mm. look here. He scared it. You can see how far Billy still got up this fairway. Come on. Gave himself a look. Hunter, this is a popular landing zone right here, just short of the basket, kind of where the old pin was. You know, it's been right a couple of times for Hunter. That's a good birdie from Jonathan, but mm -hmm. right on a couple of his putts in a row, I think. You know, I think four, he was right as well on the putt, um, and maybe another one. Yeah, not what he wanted, unfortunately. Hole six, moving on to a little bit of a tougher hole than the last one, par three, 320 feet. Going up to kind of where the drone's at now and then taking probably a 45 degree turn to the right. You'll see some forehands here, try to get through a couple of, of gaps and, and try to skip up to the basket. You might also see a right hand backhand trying to turn over to the basket. Jonathan gets a little lucky on the inside gap there. Makes it all the way to the top of the hill and that's gonna be a long look or just an easy layup if he wants the three. Yeah, if you can get anywhere close to those two trees that, that Jonathan just got to, then you've you're sitting pretty. You're going to get at least a par unless something weird happens to the putt. But that's that's kind of birdie territory. Yeah, the, the main thing you want to do off this tee is just hit that first gap. You don't want to hit the tree on the right. You don't want to hit the tree on the left. That's bogey land. You just want to hit this first gap, move up towards the basket, and give yourself a chance. Lance a little inside, too. He's going to kick something and... and and off left, he's going to have some sort of upshot from there. I really like the forehand shot here. I think Hunter's going to throw uh, kind of similar to what I like to do. I like to throw the forehand and almost flip it up a little bit mm -hmm. um, up at this gap and try to get uh, that straight flying forehand. It's going to challenge that sh the straight trees just in front of the gap. Flipped it up maybe enough. He got most of the way up there, but it looks like maybe he caught a couple of things. Okay, we've got the the backhand on Billy and try to 
Turn it over. That needs to flip. Oh. oh. Caught a late tree. Go ahead and hit that tree. That was exactly what you want. Lance is kind of bottom of the hill over to the left here. Just needs to get something clean up. That's a great shot from him. That's going to give him probably a 25-foot putt. Mm-hmm. Just need something clean here from Billy. Overshot it a little bit. He's going to have a little bit of a comebacker, but have an option. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, nice putt there. I hated that Hunter's dad, who was on catch cam today, moved away. Because uh, he was right in. He would have gotten a good, uh, good shot of that putt going in the chains. Jonathan gave that uh, a nice half bid. He gave it the, you know, little bit of turn to it. Left it short, though. Didn't want too much out of it. It's a good catch by the basket for Lance. Mm-hmm. A little low left, but it, it stuck in there. Mm. Just hit the front of the cage, Billy. And he's, he's struggled a little bit to start this round. Those bogeys happen quickly. Yeah, and they can add up like like you just insinuated super fast on this course. Hole seven, par three, 312 feet. This uh, this is a tough one if you don't have a forehand shot, and even if you do, it's still tough because you have to fight your way through a few trees and then make certain it turns at the correct time. Yeah, it's such a tough hole. There's so much danger if you hit something early, and then there's danger late to that slope around the basket just can be detrimental to pots or, or upshots they get up there. Mm -hmm. Hunter kind of dove in early to those trees. Jonathan going with a real fast disc. Going to let it flip over left. Looks like it maybe caught something and dropped down. That was not nearly as far as I thought it would have been. It had to have hit something. Yeah, it's it was one of those last trees before it makes a turn towards the basket. Lance well, a little inside. Makes it all pretty far down there, though. Yeah, it's a common landing spot if you throw something super straight down there. There's a couple of holly bushes that are not very friendly, but, I mean, you're looking at the basket. Yeah, they're right there in that, like you said, the popular landing zone. Everything kind of funnels down to it. Really a little inside. He's going to be looking down. This is the red tee kind of fairway. You can just see that slope near the basket. This gets away from you quickly if you don't land it cl close. Jonathan with a, a tight upshot there. I think that's a colt out of his hand and just hits yeah. a root. Kind of jumps away from the basket more than it, I think, should have for him. But Yeah, he told me that he said that root will be gone on Monday. So <laughs> he might have gone out there with an axe. That's a decent upshot from Hunter. That'll, that'll give him a putt. Oh, Lance got trapped in that holly bush. He hit one of those those small trees right up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. He got through the bush. Fought the holly, got to the... Oh, that's a great putt, though. Yep. He ran it down. He knew. And yeah, Billy's really, uh, really struggling on these first few holes here. Those bogeys are piling up quick, like the we said. The putts are going nice and straight, but... I. I, just a little low, all of them. Pipeline's so tough. It's like, you know, putting a bunch of weight on yourself and and making a big snowball going downhill. It's hard to stop yourself. Yeah. Once once you take a bogey, you feel like you got to make up for it. You got to get got to get it back. You play a little bit more aggressive. You end up getting another bogey, and uh, they start piling up pretty quick.
triple eight. Talk about a, a tough angle here, par three, 356. Here's kind of the corner. It's a very gradual turn all the way up here with the basket finishing to the right after the left-hand turn. Um, you're gonna see, I think Hunter's gonna be lining up this forehand Anheuser, trying to get it to turn and hold all the way left. Just such, such a tough angle, and like we've said with a lot of these holes, if you hit something early, Hunter hitting something early, luckily hitting down into the fairway, but if that goes left or, or right off the fairway, that's that's tough. Yeah, this is such a great hole design. I mean, the whole thing just keeps turning to the left, but then at the last second, the basket's on the right. Jonathan opts for the backhand. Hits the gap well. It's going to fade off a little left, but kind of corrected itself, I think, off of a tree, and he's sitting dead center fairway. He, he might not... Yeah, he might not admit to this in public, but he just threw a buzz. I will give him a hard time forever about that, because I've been harping on buzzes forever. Yeah, you know, he's choosing a mid-range for this hole. He, he has no uh, no effort trying to get a, a two on this hole. He's just happy with that three. He mm -hmm. wants that somewhere up around the corner. He knows that there's going to be mistakes made on this hole by other people, and he just wants the, the three. Move on. Yeah, there's going to be some shots uh, up there to the right. Billy and uh, and Lance both off the fairway are going to have to make up for it. Wow. Great right up shot up. from Hunter. Yeah, that's perfect. Lance, you see him lining up. Forehand roller, normal forehand. He tries the roller and it doesn't quite get out. Billy's even deeper in the woods over here. He's going to try to go straight through the woods. Yeah, he was almost on the fairway of hole nine white T. Jonathan's there. upshot and that was pretty open. He kind of misfired it off there to the left. I think that might have been a Toro that Jonathan was throwing and he expected to cut back a lot more quickly. Lance with a long Anheuser hmm. bid at it. There's a chance for Jonathan to still to save the par. He's still, he's still got a putt at it. No. Didn't get enough on it and left it outright a little bit as well. There you go. Some bogey cleanups. Hunter's going to take a stroke on the card here. Mm -hmm. Shout out to uh, Christopher Hess taking the only birdie on the day wow. for this hole. It's a great birdie. Mm -hmm. And this hole was one birdie, seven pars, and 14 bogey plus. Par 4, 512 feet. This one's treacherous. The first thing you got to do is avoid the trees and get uphill here, but then you have to wind over to the right. It's a big arching forehand or backhand turnover and make your way towards this basket here. Yeah, it just keeps going and going and keeps winding. And love this hole. You know, if you got these uh, field goal upright trees here trying to hit this gap for it. Right in front of you. Mm hmm. And trying to throw higher is probably not your best bet here because, you know, they, they pinch off tighter the higher you go. Jonathan getting a good forehand rip out of that one. Mm hmm. Makes it up there just, just at the bottom of that slope, or top of the first slope, bottom of the second one. 
Sometimes you can get a, a, a line now almost taking a 90 degree turn to the right and, <laughs> and looking towards the basket. Lance also ripping a good forehand here. Similar spot to where Jonathan landed. Four good clean tee shots. Yeah. Yeah, excited to see these second shots all all in pretty good position. A lot of them are going to be looking down this skinny gap on the very inside, as far inside as you can go. Jonathan's going to take a bottom stamp boss here. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That is Clean ridiculous. all the way. He's, He's got going to have, yeah, maybe a 40 footer, but you know, any putt here is, is a great putt to have. More importantly, he's got an easy par. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan making this hole look like he designed it. Mm. Uh, and Hunter trying to get the backhand through there and, and just caught one of the trees to hit. You know, we're, we're kind of looking down the skinny gap right now. There's also, I think what Hunter was going for is the is the main gap is actually out further to the left. So if you're swinging it out wide, mm -hmm. that gap is, is larger than the one that most of these guys are going down. It's really ideal if you can try to get off that tee and you've got a, a really big arm, you can get all the way up to that big gap off the tee and then have an easier second shot. Oh, okay. Billy's going to funnel down there somewhere. He's going to have a really long look for a putt. Lance just trying to put something up there with a the long jump putt. Hunter, online just a little short. See where Billy ended up. Ooh, trying to ring up the forehand. Yeah. Ooh, that was so pretty. And Jonathan here with a with a chance at, at birdie on on nine. Oh, just left and a little bit low. Sit, sit, sit. Yep. Thank goodness yeah, it did point. sit down. But yeah, I mean, just to have a birdie look on this, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, this hole averaged five on the day, so one over par. No birdies on the day. Seven pars. That's, that's all you saw out of the out of the groupings. So. Mm. Par was taking a stroke on you know a lot of the field. Yeah. All right, we're at the end of the front nine, last round, round three here for the Hub City Amp Championship. Lance is holding on to it with a two-stroke lead over Jonathan, and then two strokes more over Hunter, and then Billy's bringing up the rear here at even. Still got a long ways to go and a lot of more treachery before we get to the end. We'll see you on the back nine. <laughs>